Hi pals, so this is the beginning before the beginning because um, I basically accidentally screwed this whole thing up and lost half of my video and haven't been able to get it back. So I just decided I'm going to use the 20 something minutes that I still have and then I'll just fill in the rest <laughs> as much as I can anyway. So it's kind of like starts off as a vlog and then we'll just turn into a sit down recap analysis sort of thing. I'm sure I'm going to miss some things out that I gave a lot of a shit about, but there we are. That's what's happening. I don't have the mental capacity to redo the whole thing. I'm not even sure if I could find all the files to edit it together either. So this is what we're getting this week. So there we go. <laughs> Here we are again. <laughs> it's mental illness o'clock. Um, and that means it's time to watch Dawson's Creek. <laughs> Hi pals, here we are again. It is one of them times where I just not having a good time. Mental illness, physical illness um, and sensory overload absolutely gone done fucked me up today. I almost destroyed my phone which is literally my camera, YouTube. <laughs> Love my life but it seems to be okay. But yeah, so I've just watched episode one of season three yay so we started off with um the usual will they won't they with dawson and joey turns out they won't even though they both want to and thanks to dawson asking pacey to take care of joey whilst he cannot because they need some time away from each other right now before they can be friends or what the fuck ever sorry i've got to change hands because that is my takiyasu arm this whole episode I feel like was just a lot of foreshadowing for when, spoiler alert, Pacey and Joey start dating, which I think will or like is this season. So very excited to Mundo. Oh god, I just had like an hour and a half bath because mental illness. So that's where I was watching the episode <laughs> and that's why I look like this. Hello. So yeah, I've just finished the first episode of season three and it ends with Pacey hugging Joey on the dock because she's crying over Dawson. I also just want to throw in here, so as I'm editing this video, the first episode start, well, ends with Joey and Pacey on the dock, and the last episode ends with Joey and Pacey on the dock, and I just really like the symmetry! It's not the same dock, but, you know, I just love that. Okay. And there's just lots of moments in this episode that just really feel like heavy implication, like, now that I know they get together, and like I know that maybe he never let go of that romantic interest in her from when he tried to kiss her like in season one or what the fuck ever. So like there is the bit where he's talking to Dawson. Imagine this. Joey walks into the hallway, does that cute flicky thing she does with her hair and looks at you with her like deep beautiful eyes or like brown eyes or something like that. And it's like mm, you, I think you've been thinking about this moment for like too much as well Pacey I don't think it's just you saying this for Dawson I think this is just you and then like when Dawson is like hey can you as my best friend Pacey take care of my other best friend whilst we're not being best friends right now and Pacey's like Dawson no Dawson please don't do I have to and he's like yes and he's like okay but like I just think it's funny it's basically Dawson's fault that his two best friends get together when he fancies one of them still or Sash is in love with them you know um and then like at the end of the show when he's talking to Joey on the dock he's like yeah because like why would I understand you know I can't possibly understand having to let somebody you love go um and like be okay with the fact that you're perfect for each other but not for like not right now and like I know like, surface level, yeah, that could very easily be Andy, but subtext could also have meant Joey. Like, he could he could mean that about both of them, you know? Not everyone has one soulmate. Also, soulmates can be non-monogamous and also non-romantic and non-sexual, you know? There's many kinds of soulmates, you know? Like, I just think maybe he felt that way about both of these girls. You know, he made a move on Joey, knowing she liked Dawson, and always has done, got rejected, um, and just had to be okay with that. Even though he may have thought about this a bunch, like, wow, I think we'd be really good together. He 
just had to be okay with that now wasn't the time. Well, Pacey, it's going to be the time. I believe in you. Also, I just love him so much. Also, I was thinking, like, because this whole episode as well is like, um, I forgot that Jen and Jack were now living together with Grams. And I was sort of sat there like, wow, why... <laughs> Why is it that on like on the surface I feel like I really relate to Joey and Pacey as like really big parts of like my outward personality <laughs> but then my inward personality is definitely something more of a mixture of Jack and Jen because I'm gay and I'm mentally ill and spoiler alert again I've got some fucked up shit with my body <laughs> and my heart kind of my heart could be my heart near my heart but could fucking kill me you know so we are beginning episode two. Pacey is really nervous because he's going to see Andy for the first time in, uh, I don't remember how long, six months. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to. And he's taking Joey. <laughs> She's like, ha ha, I cheated on you, Pacey. Ha <laughs> So, RIP. I did not talk about Eve <laughs> in episode one because I had better things to talk about. But she's still in this. I just want to say, I think she is a fully grown woman. Um, Dawson is 16 and whatever it is she's doing with this boy is illegal and I'm not here for it and I just, I hate any and all plot lines involving adults with children <laughs> in that way. I hate it. So, um, she <sighs> met Dawson on the bus home from Philadelphia to Creek. Where do they live? Cape Side? <laughs> to Creek? It's same. She was a stripper. He was a nerd. She was a stripper. Can I make it any more obvious? Um, and I think you have to be at least 18 to be a stripper. It has not been clarified how old she is, and there has definitely been some, um, heavy hinting that, that, that there has been some contacts. <laughs> also, in the opening credits, I noticed this on the first episode, there's a close-up of Pacey hugging Joey, um, and like you, if you weren't paying attention, you might not notice, but like, well that's obviously her, yeah, but like, you know, why are they hugging? Why are they hugging? We know why they're hugging, but like, why are they hugging? Um, because then you'll see Andy, he's got short blonde hair. Yeah. I'm confusion. When we last saw her, she had brown hair. So, I don't know, does she change it back? I've forgotten. I just don't care. Anyway, I just wanted to say, just wanted to point out. <laughs> well, that episode was like <laughs> cringe nation. I hated that so much. For like every plot point it had, I hated it so much. Ugh. Um, R.I.P. Pacey and Andy. Um, Joe and Dawson are going to be friends again, it's alright, um, but also, Dawson and this, like, okay, I have many questions, I don't believe her, I think as well at the end of this, I don't know whether it's the end of the series or in like a few episodes, it's debunked that nobody knows who she is or how old she is, and that she was definitely just lying about who she is, but, um, yeah, so that makes me feel really weird. Um, Dawson got caught with her on stage in front of the entire pep rally. <laughs> that makes me want to die. Jack is now on the football team. So I'm just going to call that where all of my gay sports story loving came from. I've read a few gay sports novels and they <laughs> are definitely top tier. I feel like they just missed out so much with Jack in this show. Like I know this is probably like a huge step for TV programs in like you know the very early 2000s but um it's not good enough. It is not good enough but um yeah I just wish there was more Romance for this boy. Well, if it isn't inspected, get a clue. So. What brings you to these parts of this laid out? Your trunk. You look good. It's the night for the PSAT, PC. Why are you drinking? I don't need to study. Yeah, I got the test, right? <laughs> if you have it, get it back. Oh, I wish I did, hombre. I mean, I really wish I did. But I don't. I don't. It's not here. It's not at home under my bed with my playboys. It is nowhere to be found. See, we've been friends for 16 years, and I'm not stupid. Friends, huh? 
you know, that word friends, it's an interesting word. It implies that you would actually believe your friend when he's telling you something. He's telling the truth. He's telling... <laughs> you want to know what I find so very amusing about this situation? I mean, what I think is so really, really rich about all this is that you yourself were capable of stealing this test. All right, you thought about it. You didn't throw that test away. You didn't give it back to Eve. You brought the test to us. No, I wanted to consult the people I trusted to determine what the best thing was to do. I never thought that anyone would be so weak or so self-motivated to actually swipe it. Weak and self-motivated, huh? Now, which one of those two colorful adjectives would I be? Are we are it? Yes, I am, Dawson. And so are you. You, Dawson Leary, are a self-righteous son of a bitch who cares more about his rose-colored, defunct 1950s belief system than the people who fail to live up to it, huh? Just a choice of words coming from a smug, cold-hearted son of a bitch who just dumped his girlfriend after she begged and pleaded for an ounce of sympathy. He's not been sent to fucking prison. Now you're saying we're crazy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he would never do that first time again. He started that whole thing. What? I'm not getting into this. Okay, so tell me. What? What do you think happened to that test? I don't know. But to be honest, I... I don't want to know. I mean, there's certain things in life you just... You're better off not knowing. The things you... Wish you never knew. Never asked. Never said. Okay, so tell me honestly. Does it look that bad? On your face, any reconstructive surgery whatsoever? Was a definite improvement. <laughs> I love them so much. So Dawson being his ignorant, self-obsessed self fucking exposes to three million people in America that Jack is very good at football and is gay and just fucks everything up. Um and to make up for it. <laughs> He gets all of the football players to wear makeup. <laughs> also, Joey skipped class with Pacey, but they were caught by the principal. Um, I'm hoping that Andy goes soon, because she's really boring, very whiny and neurotic. She stole the test sheet or whatever, and is now paranoid about it. So there we go, that's, that's what's going on. I love the principal. The principal is um, the second black man in the show first one being Bodie. it's been a while we don't see him ever um but yeah he's really funny i i don't know i just enjoy his rapport with his like students and it's fun um but also he's like fair <laughs> like just driving up and finding joey and pacey <gasps> not in class he's like ha get in the car <laughs> I've just been talking and it was not on record. Um, I have mental illness. Episode 5, Film Noir is the theme, but we see Jen and Jack stargazing, hot summer night. Jen's talking about how when she first met Dawson and Joey, like how jealous she was of like that friendship, the history they have and how she wishes she had something like that. She says, you know, like friends are nothing to scoff over or something like that. You know, I just really love that vibe. That's the one thing that I really feel like Jen and Jack do. For a lot of people, I know it's like, well, they're, they're only best friends because he's gay. You can be two straight people of different genders and still just be friends. But I do like that they are basically the friendship version of soulmates that is just not appreciated enough in television and film. Um, like, I feel like personally now I have a few friend soulmates. I love them just as much, if not more than 
people who I thought were romantic soulmates, but also I wish this was something that I saw more regularly when I was younger and growing up, because a lot of emphasis and pressure is put on romantic and sexual relationships. Does, is that that's not the be all and end all and i just really like what they represent that they are basically the platonic partners of the show you know they've created their own family and in the later series um you know at the end jen has a baby of her own and she already has it planned out that jack and his partner are the godparents it's become obvious that she's very unwell she's full-on is like yep my child is your child also i just love the way that grams you know adopted jack into her family as well i mean she did kind of adopt everybody to her guiding role caring role of everybody um and i feel like dawson's parents did too i love is his name mike or mick it's really funny because neither of those is correct <laughs> it's mitch and i just based on his name in pretty much every single one of these videos so hopefully from now i remember his name is mitch Jeez. But I'm going off on a tangent, so I'll stop there before I just... <sighs> that iconic moment when Joey is fighting off a fully grown man and some advances on her. And thinking he's doing something, he then starts trying to get with Andy. So she, as in Joey, then tries to warn Andy, who then gaslights her and is telling her it's all in her head and like wow but that did not stop joey from crashing their date and refusing to let andy be alone with this fully grown adult man jack tries to set jen up with this henry freshman kid who seems kind of cute but ends up being really weird and creepy jen doesn't appreciate it and then she just flips a switch on jack and is like maybe you're the one who's lonely for a relationship and he's like maybe i am and that's really sad <laughs> so andy made it up that this guy sexually assaulted her to get pacey back and i'm just gonna play this section because it's triggering for me in ways of like i have been this person not in this literal like situation but the things she says um, but I have more, mostly been on the receiving end of this kind of manipulation, so... Hi. That picture that you have in your mind of the way something was, it's not going to be that way again. Yeah, but it, it could be better. Yeah, it could be. It's on how badly damaged it was in the first place. How badly damaged was it? Okay, Pacey, can we please stop beating this metaphor to death and just talk about- What the fuck? What the fuck? How did I forget this as a plot line? That very strange girl who is- who called herself Eve, did a bunch of illegal shit, was trying to sleep with Dawson and all that stuff, is Jen's biological sister. This plotline also just never, is never revisited. <laughs> like, there are a lot of things in this series that are just never featured again. Like, I don't think we ever really see um, Jack's dad again, like, after they leave and go to college. And, yeah, this mysterious biological sister, like, there's no plot. There's no plot to that. That was it. It was kind of an unnecessary, like, connection to Cape Side with someone who hasn't lived there in uh i don't know 20 years if not more because they lived in new york i can't remember if he tells jen or not but yeah i just know that this is something that just, she never comes back she doesn't <laughs> that's it episode nine whilst there's been a lot of weird <laughs> stuff between pacey and jen we are now getting into it a little bit with pacey and joey she's making him do partner dance classes with her in exchange for helping him pass his exams or something like that so it's about to get into my favorite era i'm excited about it also why do i why do i look good right now <laughs> hi whilst it was the beginning of my favorite pairing 
it was also a very sad episode where Jack was like doing some online dating because he's gay and he's the only out gay in the village you know know the feels and it was just sad because he didn't have the confidence to actually go into the cafe to meet his date so I'm sad for him and I'm start sad for the gay he stood up I'm not gonna sneeze again <laughs> yes oh Jesus <laughs> Just, hey. At least you fought the good fight. Hey, Jack. Uh, Ethan. From the, from the train, Ethan. <laughs> I prefer just playing Ethan. Here I am. I'm downstairs on the couch because I have the house to myself today. Um, so I've watched a few episodes. We have Jack kind of dating a guy, maybe. He keeps calling him like a baby gay. He keeps making him feel like really validated that's my dog hello 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 thank you very much so that's nice this boy ethan is very good looking i think i'm gonna sneeze um joey's met some college guy who's also very good looking but he's a college guy so inappropriate in my opinion i'm sorry my dog is just going to be eating her bones so that is that um and then there's been like play rehearsals so we cut off where i'm about to talk about pacey having a natural talent for being an actor can relate and i basically think it's really sad that this never comes up again and like i said earlier in the video there are lots of things that just kind of end in this series because they just never bring it back when they absolutely could have done and that's kind of what it sounded like or seemed like they were doing we have pacey in the play as the leading man like he didn't even audition he was just brought in and he was amazing and andy is the assistant director you don't need a degree you don't even need to have finished high school or gotten decent grades in high school to go and be an actor so i feel like it was kind of a missed opportunity to have pacey kind of chasing a dream especially seeing as you know dawson is a film director director, camera operator, writer, and uh, Joey's also a writer. Like everybody had a, has creative passions, but he kind of wasn't allowed to. And I totally understand that his character is that the epitome of kids who have failed in school. This is something I didn't really go on in my previous edit, but like, I feel like Pacey really is the epitome of those kids who maybe had a teacher who made them feel like they could do something or had a couple of friends who made them feel like they were something. Obviously I understand why he never chased a dream or didn't have a dream but you know it would have been nice to have had that combination with him possibly trying to pursue acting on the side because that's a very common thing especially during that period as well like the early 2000s many people kind of just started out waiting tables, working whatever job they could and going to loads of auditions so that's just another plotline that I feel like could have continued but didn't and I think it's sad. They all go to, I think it's like Dawson's auntie's house or some shit for like a fun weekend away. Did they all go? Yeah they all went including Andy and I'm pretty sure Jen and Jack or was this when his boy, his like boyfriend, not boyfriend was there but anyway they went on this trip after Pacey finally kissed Joey again and she got annoyed with him for doing that. Oh there's so many plot points that I just that have now disappeared forever so it was meant to just be joey and dawson going to his auntie's house but pacey ended up coming with his friends whose name i can't remember because i don't care and i don't know why andy also <laughs> went as well i think i wasn't paying close enough attention at that point but basically my favorite trope they have to share a bed but just watch the episode where they went away to some fucking random person's bloody auntie go fucking hang out and have a great time and she was trying to get Joey to fucking date Dawson and then walks in on, uh, on Joey kissing Pacey they had to share a bed my favourite of all tropes they have to share a bed what episode was this? 19 for personal reference watch episode 19 to make myself feel better sometimes how does nobody know still? Nobody knows, except from the auntie that walked in on them. And like, I don't know why everybody else just refused to either share a bed with Pacey or Joey. 
it was very very confusing why that was so um taboo for everybody but it was fine for them to to share about everybody else's eyes but there we go that's what happened <laughs> and they were obviously very against it but when they woke up in the morning his arm brushed get up against hers she says this later in the episode not when that happens but like yeah she says later on that she she felt it she felt the thing and so they kiss in the dark in the garden and dawson's auntie catches them even though she spent the whole weekend trying to force joey into picking and dating dawson and she was so weird about it too when she accidentally caught them it was as if she'd like caught them fucking smoking drugs or something and it's just like okay chill we had this kind of political black lives matter type um like storyline happen at one point as well where the black principal who's now i can't remember and his daughter who's now i can't remember okay nikki green and principal green nikki is this amazing student filmmaker who was absolutely snubbed at the award show where she met dawson she also met dawson on the train home because she was moving to cape side to live with her dad for a while whilst jack also meets ethan on the train nikki whilst teaching dawson an amazing lesson of like hi you can have more than one hobby and especially if your hobby is storytelling through film you should have more hobbies because you will just be making films of films and i was like points made um so gave dawson a fucking life crisis he didn't know who he was anymore hilarious so there was like a mixture of kind of a friendship kind of a rivalry with them because she was better than him at making films and he wasn't used to sharing like the school film equipment and shit like that principal green has asked like a bunch of students to paint murals to signify togetherness and unity or sh some shit like that you know things that schools do because it's cheesy as shit and joey does one of them um and pacey sees it and honestly it's pretty subpar what she did it was not great it was also like uh in a japanese style i believe so when it comes round to time to view for everyone to view it um it hers has been vandalized nobody else's and um whilst how did i bruise my knee and whilst you know nobody else's was vandalized jerry runs off fine obviously uh, I would be upset too. Pacey and Dawson go after her. Dawson's like, oh, it's just some asshole. You know, it's nothing to do with you. And Pacey's like, well, it obviously is something to do with you because yours is the only one that got vandalised. If it was just mindless, they would have vandalised all of them. Which she has a point. I don't really know why hers was vandalised, but she basically took it upon herself when Pacey finds out who it is and starts to fight. <laughs> Principal Green gets everybody in his office and he's like, what the fuck is going down? So then he's like, all right, you're fucking expelled. Get out, because this is not the first time you've done something shitty. Pacey, you're going to get like some shit on your record that's going to fuck you over for college if you're not bloody careful. But the guy they threw out of school has a really rich dad who's a fucking asshole. They, you know, typical white people, rich white people don't like being um, told off for being shitty people. Um, they don't like to experience the consequences of their actions, so they decide to basically dogpile the uh, one of three black people in their town, demonise him, make him look like an evil, horrible man. Um, you know, they used methods that are literally used today still. <laughs> like on the news articles, they were showing images that demonised him, like made him look like an angry person. And like whilst next to the TV, you would see the image of him and his daughter, you know, looking very happy and loving and soft. And like, you know, I've said before, I think that I think he's an amusing character. I think he had uh, great lines um, and he was like one of those teachers school staff members who wanted to wanted to do his job you know he wanted to help kids he wanted to teach kids and help guide them um because you see it a few times with um his interactions with pacey like there's um there was an episode where pacey convinced joey to ditch the second half of the day at school um to go pick up this boat name <laughs> sign thing that says true love and to show her his boat but they never got there because he they were caught by the principal in his car and pacey was trying to make some kind of like joke or you know excuse 
um, and the principal was like, haha, get in the fucking cup, you know, like, whilst he clearly found Pacey amusing, he was also still, like, fair and wanted to do his job. Overall, I feel like it's sad that Principal Green and Nikki Green had, like, such minimal parts in the show, because Nikki changes Dawson's entire perception of life <laughs> but you know it's still like damn they were not seen very often um they often didn't have a lot to say or they were only in like one-on-one -on -one scenes they weren't often in like group scenes and you know and it's like this show many times with jack and many times with their black characters they they just show issues that were prevalent prevalent when the show was being made that are still prevalent now and it's just is very sad and eye-opening over and over again of how even though we might have seen perceived change it seems to have just be kind of going backwards again and it's the same in tv you know it's we know who is in charge we know who's in charge of our country we know who's in charge of media outlets we know who's in charge of uh fiction media <laughs> Hollywood, BBC, you know, Netflix, like we know, we know, we're not ignorant, we, we are aware of who sits at the top and decide who is allowed to do what, what stories are told. And you know, whilst this episode is then a big part about, you know, how do you receive justice, um, and you basically can't. So like Joey takes um, a leading role in getting people to sign petitions and to um, protest outside of the some kind of chancellor of some shit it's building and even Dawson's mum who hasn't been an anchor for a while decides to film the story with Dawson holding the camera and then she takes it to her old station to be publicised you know with even with all this they wanted Principal Green to be fired and even though they got, got the one over on the vice chancellor you know this principal knew he would never he would he would never know peace basically in his job ever again everything he did from that point onwards would be under a microscope so he still left anyway which i understand like it makes sense because as well he you know he'd rather leave on a winning note than stay and continue fighting um now that he has you know being put under this light of constant criticism because even though it was only one family who was doing that there will be other families who would do the same thing and they'll probably just change some of their like wordings in their contracts and stuff so that they can finally fire these people for no reason because that's what happens in real life um we have jack going to spend the weekend with ethan he thinks his dad's going to go on holiday or on a business trip or something, but he changes his mind. So it ends up being that it's Jack, Ethan and his dad all in the house for the weekend. I don't know what it is they go to do, but they're looking at like old vintage cars. Ethan seems to be into it. Jack is pissed. He is pissed. Pissed. That his dad is just like, won't shut the fuck up. It's really embarrassing. Why the fuck is he like, why does he care about me now? You know, why hasn't he tried to make... An effort with me before why is he doing it this weekend when it's supposed to be you know i'm supposed to hang out with you and ethan's like hey you know like he's trying <clears throat> pardon me and he's like oh yeah but why now why is he trying now um and the dad overhears it and goes home and he's like ah oh, i'm i see i have interrupted something so i'm going to go back to the house and he's clearly upset and it is one of those moments just like oh, sad face cry because like you know yeah he's had a ball so he's clearly like made some kind of subconscious change and then later on jack comes downstairs it's late at night and he comes to talk to his dad and is like why 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 now and he basically comes up with a story that's like oh well i was talking to a co-worker whose son is um a piece of shit <laughs> basically basically it just sounded like this man's son needed help um so he's like well my son isn't that bad and i don't even know him so I wanted to get to know you and that's why I cancelled my business trip and you're like okay why didn't you say that or you know shit like that and it was like you know I it was one of us had to make the first move and Jack was like yeah but I didn't expect it to be you and then they both sit at the chess table and his dad you know beautiful beautiful tv moment right here his dad is the first person to make the move in chess 
How long have I been talking for that this has not been recording? The world does not want me to finish this video. I don't know what colour actually goes first in chess because I don't know how to play chess. But um, Jack's dad picks up his chess piece and puts it on the board. And Jack picks up his chess piece and puts it on the board. And I just thought it was a really lovely like cinematic TV moment of just like wonderful symbolism. Uh, you know, he makes the first move, literally, metaphorically, and to show Jack is also going to try, he moves his chess piece too. And it's just a really nice moment where where this show can be like a little bit full of drama and not a lot of wholesomeness happens sometimes. Like sometimes it's a bit heavy on the drama. There are things about <laughs> Jen's boyfriend, Henry, I haven't really talked about because um, I forgot that I will try to talk about it. He pisses me off. I am pissed. I am pissed. Hate him. He seems silly and adorable at the beginning. Then you're like, mm, you're kind of creepy and a little bit obsessive. And then he just becomes a manipulative piece of shit, which is just like, you know, um because of the heteronormative standards of our relationships in society, um, I don't think many people realised how fucked up this relationship was when it was written, when it happens in real life. Um, yeah, I want to point out for the people who have experienced that kind of relationship, I've been there, you know, that's not okay. And I feel like this show should have done a better job of pointing out it was not okay. Um, but I don't think they understood it wasn't. God, fuck, where do I begin? They go on their first date to Pacey's play and he feels like she's ignored him the whole time. It's like, well, she's there for her friend Pacey. You, you're the one that made it a date. And she felt pressured and forced into doing it when she really wanted to just sort of rearrange with you and go to see her friend's opening night, whatever. Like, so this is your fault, really. Of course, she's, you know, not going to talk to you during the play. She's not going to talk to you that much after the play. She's going to be speaking to her friends that are there um, and the friends that are part of the production. So it's like, mate, mental illness. He then climbs up onto the high beams and publicly humiliates her, basically calls her out for ignoring him the whole night and feeling embarrassed by him. And I was like, yeah, I'd be fucking embarrassed too, mate. What the fuck? What the fuck? Acting like this, I would have dumped you right fucking there. Um, but she kind of low-key seems to find it endearing. I'm like, mate, what the fuck? No. And then during this episode near the end, she is like, there's, it's, a split between the different characters it's mainly between joey pacey and dawson but she has a little snippet too so it's the episode where joey and pacey are like um we should probably tell dawson and they keep arguing about who's going to tell dawson and i'm just like why don't you tell them together because you are each his best friend it makes no sense i'm gonna burp. Uh, but so they argue about it all day so you see it in one of their perspectives i think it's joey's first then you see it in pacey's um and then you see it in dawson's but then because jen knows jen is the only other person who knows about joey and pacey because you know joey's asked advice and pacey has asked advice um and even if they've not actually specifically said any names she's put it together she's not like clueless so the snippet of her section is dawson comes to her with a problem i don't know what it was and she thinks he's come over because he's found out about joe and pacey so she accidentally tells him and he's like uh, what the fuck absolutely livid fucks off home and then is a stroppy bitch for the rest of the day she's really upset that she's accidentally out with her friend's relationship to their best friend even though she didn't do on purpose i would feel bad too if i'd done that so she tries to talk to Henry about it because he's over at her house and he's like, oh, I don't care about whatever drama your friends are in this week um, and keeps trying to like seduce her or whatever. Um, and she's just like, what the fuck? Like, I'm clearly not okay right now. He's like, I'm, I'm trying to make you feel okay. Um, and she's like, get out, get out of my house, fuck off. And then for the next three weeks, he's standing outside her house and her place of work with a sign saying, Jane Lindley, please forgive me. And it's like, no, don't fucking forgive him. He's a fucking too many swear words to say but there's also like i think she forgives him he i don't know whether he's like side working there as a bus boy but dawson's parents are now running the leary restaurant food place cookhouse i don't know <laughs> i can't remember what it's called it's the leary's something um jen is a hostess because she was a shit waitress and yeah it looks like 
her boyfriend works there as like a busboy, but I can't really tell. But there's also another waitress there who's like a pretty blonde whoever, like she's really unimportant. She's literally just here for these scenes. And he, like she's flirting with him. She doesn't know that that's Jen's boyfriend. He, I don't know where this started. He's uh, like, was talking about how Jen's like never jealous and she's, you know, very blase about their relationship. Um, and she was like, yeah, well, why would I be jealous? Like, so when this other waitress keeps hitting on him, he keeps saying to her like, oh, she keeps hitting on me. She's like, well, tell her that you have a girlfriend. Tell her I'm your girlfriend. I already have said that I have a girlfriend, but she keeps flirting with me. So then as well, even if this girl is just being nice it looks like flirting to Jen so then she humiliates herself because he's mani manipulated her basically so she mouths off at this waitress and is like that's my boyfriend blah 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 and she's like I had no idea that was your boyfriend why didn't you say something so then Jen feels stupid because a lot of it is what Henry was putting in her head anyway and like yeah well if did he really tell her he has a girlfriend because you don't ever see that you know you see them together but you never like hear what either of them say so even then do you know if she's even flirting with him or is it just the like body language that you're reading as the, as like flirtatious so you know like I felt so bad for Jen and like I didn't hate her on my first viewing but I didn't like her a lot I liked her enough but I do feel like there are some things in this that I'm just like damn like yeah I mean Jen got fucked over so many times because then she says to Henry after she mouths off in front of an entire restaurant full of people her customers like she turns to Henry and is like there you are I'm jealous now are you happy and then she walks out and it's like dumb straight fucking fight him it's just like mental illness i hate that man so much but back to the three-part episode split thing the end of the episode joey and pacey do end up telling him together but pacey's the one that says it but he already knows obviously so he absolutely loses his shit for some reason andy's there um she's crying because even though she's literally on a date with another boy <laughs> she says to um joey earlier in the episode we're like oh my god i just like I had a moment with Pacey and I really think that you know I'm not over him yet and I just you know I know this other guy's really nice and I'll stop there because I'm being really rude you know she's just not over him I get it I get it but oh my god it is annoying <laughs> and then Joey's basically guilted into choosing Dawson as a friend over Pacey and his romantic relationship um I'm just like why are you like this and then Dawson's parents fucking like his mum proposes to his dad and they're gonna get married again great i love them but what the fuck i'm just like i remember his name though mitch don't know the mum's name can't remember the mum's name i'm so sorry mental illness what else um so then dawson does an alternative prom under the guise of making it so jack can bring his boy date um because the original prom organizer is a homophobe <laughs> thinks everyone should is going to hell but actually it's to seduce joey and it's really weird and he does it at the restaurant his parents own and he's taking joey just as friends but to seduce her to show her that we're really perfect <laughs> and pacey goes with andy also as friends because he wants to see joey at the prom at the prom joey was dancing with dawson and he's like i don't know what was happening but they got in an argument and joey runs off and then she's outside on the dock um and then Jack gets in a fight with Ethan because Ethan's basically, you know, I've been calling him a baby gay for fucking ever. And then suddenly he actually says, no, I'm just, I'm just as a, a public baby gay as you. Uh, me and my ex-boyfriend, even though we were together for two years, never actually went anywhere. So I'll kind of force you into bringing me to this prom. Um, and Jack was pissed. I would have been pissed too. Bitch, you were being insane with this shit and it's a lie. And you literally have made me do this in front of all of these people i know you know none of these people there is no risk for you um so he storms out on the dock you know him and joey have a moment where they're like uh -huh, life sucks at least we're friends though you know it was a nice little moment and then you know it's just like kind of sad because they're both there like <laughs> we love somebody when you love someone sometimes you want to kill them when you love someone he sometimes makes you cry i can't remember the words properly and also it has a very racist accent on that song so yeah it's like a nice moment of like hey at least we have each other friends because um jen's at the prom with henry henry and she's like okay what are we doing this summer 
and he's like i'm going to summer camp for eight weeks and she's like what what loses her shit because he didn't bother to mention it at all you know it's nearly the summer break he hasn't mentioned this it's her prom it's not his prom it's her prom because he's like a year or so younger which makes his like manipulative tactics very freaky he's very young you know so she loses her absolute shit and ignores him for the rest of the night so she's not really been around jack jack does uh you know jack's date fucks off doesn't stay at the prom joey goes inside and has a dance with pacey and pacey tells her you know what the fuck are you doing so <laughs> he's like mm, these are flashy and she's like mm, yeah they are dawson's months <laughs> he's like they're not you and she's like why because i'm poor or because i'm like a boy and he's like neither and he points at her bracelet and he's like this is you elegant but simple and she's like it's my mum's he's like i know you told me about it six months ago and relays the story of like when she mentioned it and that he just remembered because he likes her and they were both so sad when they were dancing. They both felt like they were going to fucking cry. I was going to cry. Oh god, in the moment, I'm going to be crying, right? I'm going to cry just talking about it. And they were just like, you know, having a good time, having a dance. Joey looks up. Dawson's there watching them dancing and he loses his absolute fucking shit. He lost his marbles. Lost his marbles. Runs off. Joey has to go after him, obviously, for fuck's sake. Andy saw him dancing too. And she's crying as well. But when they're going home, you know, Pacey's walking her home. He's like, I'm sorry. I really thought I wanted to go to prom with you because you know i do care about you and we are friends but when i got there i just wanted to see joey and i knew that's why i did this and i'm sorry and she's like that's okay you know i can't forgive you right now and i can't give you what you want from me as a friend because i am upset and hurt but you know i also should have seen this coming i should have guessed but i was wearing rose tinted glasses so like there's a nice ending for those two there really where they're both like mm, let's just put it behind us at this point <laughs> joey runs after dawson dawson unveils his plan to seduce her and she's like what the fuck she's like you're making me choose and i don't want to choose and i don't really know what happens but basically she has to be the bridesmaid at dawson's parents wedding because she's you know known them her entire life and he's the best man so she you know felt like she had to be there uh, at the end of the prom night though before we finish finish the prom section there was so much to happen at prom i'm so sorry jen is like henry you're a fucking knobhead you suck and he's like if you close this door it won't just be good night it'll be goodbye and she's like goodbye i'm like thank god i was like please just end my misery end my misery jack has then gone to go and catch Ethan before he gets the train home. And Ethan's like, well, kiss me then. And he's like, well, why should I kiss you? Well, that's me. I don't think he should have had to kiss him. He's like, oh, I wanted to make sure that, you know, you really wanted to do this and you were really ready to be with me before we actually defined us as anything. It's like, yeah, I get that. But also say, say it in words. Stop manipulating him into, you know, doing things that he might not be ready to do just because of your insecurities about your ex-boyfriend. And he can't kiss him. And I'm like, also, why would you want your first kiss with him to be in the fucking train station? Even though there's no one around, why would you want to kiss him in the train station? You were just that fucking prom it would have been cute and amazing but no you train station he can't kiss him he's nervous i'm like fair fair dudes i would want i would i would not want to kiss him because i want to punch him in the face more finally prom's fucking over then it's the leary wedding pace is gonna fuck off for the summer in his little boat that he was doing up mainly himself but like he was doing up a little bit with joey like they started it together it was very cute but he hasn't actually told anybody in person he is leaving um his brother keeps telling him to stop being a pussy um and to tell joey how he feels and he's like she knows how i feel and he's like are you sure have you really told her how you feel and he's like go away but he's at the wedding anyway for dawson's parents dawson's pussy's there nice little wedding you know um a little bit weird though because they were like up on a really really high platform and all of their like guests were really far away it was very odd and you know everyone else all the friends went off for like pacey's going away party pacey's brother pulled joey over in his car he's the police officer by the way and he was like mm, pacey's leaving so you might want to go tell him how you feel because he won't be back until school starts <laughs> she's like he's like all right i'll let you off with a warning bye love him he's so 
he's such a ridiculous character but also he was really wholesome at the end of this series where he was really trying to just get his brother and his his girl this girl together like um because he's like he must be he must be like 26 <laughs> he must be at least 26 he looks quite old um compared to these other characters but like yeah joey feels like she has to stay at the wedding because dawson's been a fucking dickhead fucking dickhead and then he's like you know what piss off you want to be with him go go on i don't want you to be here because you feel like you have to be here and she's like i only stayed because you you basically said you would never forgive me will you forgive me he's like oh words are words shut up i could t say a whole speech and he does say a whole speech about what this this will just lead you back to me and he'll just break your heart and ruin everything but go bad enough so she goes pacey has a nice little like going away party it's all very cute and lovely but then everyone grams is there too but everyone is then like on their way home and then they're like oh you know what Graham said this really cute story about this boy that she had a kiss with who died in the war before she met me granddad oh ain't that nice and then they were all like shit i have regrets um so they fucking drove to catch the bus so jen could tell henry that she loves him really and would like to have sex with him because they've not had sex yet i'm like i thought you got rid of the bastard i'm so pissed i'm pissed i'm pissed i'm so angry and then they went to go and get uh, jack his boyfriend he kisses ethan in front of this boy and it's his ex-boyfriend turned boyfriend again now don't you wish you kissed him at the fucking station yeah or just never went after him you know just goodbye Never again. Also, fuck Ethan. Fuck Henry. Fuck all of this shit. <sighs> and then finally the ending. I'm so sorry this just feels like I'm going on forever. I feel like I'm talking about more things than I did originally. Somehow, Joey gets changed before she goes to see Pacey. What a waste of time. She tells him she's in love with him and she wants to go with him. And he's like, um, okay, <laughs> sure. All right then. And she's like, I'm just worried about the change of clothes. And he's like, well... We'll dock in a few days. And this is where the end scene matches the beginning scene, but also like not mirrors it. Oh, oh, I just thought about it. It's even more beautiful than I thought it was. So Pacey and Joey start the series sitting. Joey's dog that she always takes to go to see Dawson. Um, but instead it was Pacey on his on Dawson's boat to see her at her dock. So that's the signifying of the end of Joey and Dawson and the beginning of Joey and Pacey's friendship and then this is the beginning of joey and pacey's relationship as they leave the public dock get onto pacey's own boat now bitch he's got a boat now it's a proper boat not just a rowboat <laughs> fuck off dawson with your little boat and then they sail off for the summer together ain't that nice i love them the only good thing about all this really <laughs> all of this suffering so there we go i'm finally finished i'm really sorry that that just went on forever and ever and ever and ever and that it was really late and also just i fucked everything up please like this video <laughs> please subscribe to my channel and please leave a comment down below i don't know what of i'm just so i just i'm so glad i got through this to be honest at this point um tell me down below who you think is worse ethan or henry <laughs> uh, i hate them both okay hey henry Moore. but there we go and please consider donating to my coffee because this took so much time and energy and i don't have a job because i'm disabled um and yeah i mean i know a lot of you want me to continue this who have watched this which is fantastic it feels really cool that something just so silly and random that i started is actually something people want to keep watching me do <laughs> so i do really appreciate it if there are any of my videos that aren't dawson's quick related that you know other people who might like them please share them i would really appreciate reaching new audiences now i've reached 400 subscribers my next goal is 500 and that would be great before the end of the year <laughs> I've, i think i'm like 85 subscribers away from that so you know a, w a way off but i feel like i've been growing a bit faster recently um and it's kept me a bit more motivated to carry on social media is down below i also plan to be reacting to their reunion from 2018 and the trailer for the, the the reboot as well so i'll probably post those um i don't know it depends on when this reboot is supposed to come out and that will also maybe depend on if i watch the reboot as well because <laughs> i don't want the ending to change i don't want it to not be with pacey anymore so i might just have to leave the ending where it was but thank you so much for being patient being here enjoying my dawson's creek videos <laughs> if there are any other um shows as well that you think i should maybe watch and critique or talk about a bit more let me know but thank you i will see you next week
Bye.